Let's translate John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. Utos gar iga pisen o theos ton kosmon, os de ton vion ton monogony, edoken. Ina pas o pistevon is of ton mi apolite, al echi zoin eonion. Ugar ep apestilen o theos ton vion, is ton kosmon, ina crini ton kosmon, al ina sothi o kosmos di of tu. Literally, for so God loved the world that he gave the Son the only, that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have life eternal. For God did not send the Son into the world in order to judge the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. So we have our connecting conjunction here, Gar. And then we have our subject, God, and our main verb, igapisen. Utos here is kind of an adverb. Let's move it right there. And then we have our object, ton kosmon, for God so loved the world. Then we have what's something like a conjunction here, oste, and we have another main verb, edoken, then we have our direct object, the sun, the one and only. Then we have our connecting particle, ina, and we have our subjunctive here, Pas o pistevon, the one who believes. Pistevon is of tone. So this is a nominative phrase acting as our subject. And we have our negative marker and our main verb. So if you want to help visualize this, we can actually move all of this over like that. And the reason why is these are our main verbs. This entire phrase right here, pas o pistevon is of tone. This is a uh, nominative phrase. So this entire thing functions as the subject. And then we have our contrasting particle. And then we've got echi, and then the object of that. In order that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. Now, verse 17. We have gar. We have our main verb, we have our subject, we have our object, the sun, into the world. Here's a double accusative. And then we have, in order that, God might judge the world. Except it's negative. But in order that 
the world might be saved through him. So what's interesting is the world here becomes the subject. And now the verb is passive. The world might be saved through whom? Through the sun. For God loved thusly, or so, so loved the world that he gave the Son, the one and only, in order that everyone who believes in him, the Son, might not perish, but have life eternal. For God did not send the Son into the world in order that he might judge the world, but why did he send the Son? In order that the world might be saved through him. As you can see, the subject throughout these two verses is Otheos, God. God is doing these actions here. God is doing this action here. However, down here, you can see dia of two. Dia. We'll get into that later. So let's take a look at the vocabulary. Let's start with for, gar. Marker of cause or reason, for. So this is tying into uh, verse 15. Whoever believes in the Son of Man may have eternal life. So what Gar is doing is not providing cause or reason. Instead, it's a marker of clarification. And here you see John 3.16. So it's clarifying what it means for whoever believes in the Son of Man may have eternal life. Then we have utos. It's usually an adverb derived from utos. The form utos is most used before consonants as well as before vowels. It means referring to what proceeds in this manner, thus or so. But more likely, it's going to pertain to what follows in discourse material, which is what we have here, in this way, as follows. And so what it's doing is it's supplying, you can see, utos oste, which is what we have here. It's supplying how. How does God love? How how are be believers in the Son of Man able to have eternal life? Well, it's because of God. See, God is the lover. Otheos igapisen. God loved. Love here, agapao, to have warm regard for, interest in another. High esteem take pleasure in, practice, express love, prove one's love. God loved who? The world. The world is generally not a good thing, right? Elsewhere in Johannine literature, it says, do not love the world. But God loves the world. Now, God loves the world with a perfect love, whereas humans love the world with more of a finite, imperfect love, perhaps lust of the world. The sum total of everything here and now the world, the orderly universe, or it could be humanity in general. That's probably the best indicator here. So we have our utos oste. Oste meaning uh, either to introduce independent clauses, which would be translated for this reason, therefore, or so, but more than likely, it's going to be an introduction of a dependent clause. 
And so you'll translate it as so that, followed by the indicative, which is what we have here. Edoken, third singular aorist active indicative. So that he gave the son the monogenes. Tone we own, is that the son or his son? It can function semantically in the place of a pronoun. There is no noun that it modifies. Normally such an article involves no other force or it could be still dependent on a noun or other substantive. The article is often used in the place of a third person personal pronoun in the nominative case. We don't have the nominative here. This would be within a, within a Mende construction. That's not what we have here. So it does not appear that this is a good example. The one, the other, that doesn't appear relevant. Relative pronoun, who, which. Sometimes the article is equivalent to a relative pronoun in force. This is especially true when it is repeated after a noun before a phrase. After a noun, before a phrase. That is not what we have here. Possessive pronoun. The article is sometimes used in contexts in which possession is implied. The article itself does not involve possession, but the notion can be inferred from the presence of the article alone in certain contexts. It has to be patently evident. Unless a noun is modified by a possessive pronoun or at least an article, possession is almost surely not implied. Unless there's a possessive pronoun already, you can translate this as that he sent, that he gave his son the one and only. His one and only son. His only son. Or monogenes. So this is monos only, genos, like generation, translated only son. It's either pertaining to being the only one of its kind within a specific relationship, one and only, or pertaining to being the only one of its kind or class, unique in kind. You can see here the renderings only unique may be quite adequate for all its occurrences here, meaning in Johannine literature. You've got the example here. Now, Ina marks purpose. He gave, why? With the purpose that everyone who believes, now we're looking back at verse 15, aren't we? Everyone who believes in him, in Jesus, is instead of n. Why? Because Pistevo uses is, or it can use is. It's simply marking the object of belief. You believe Jesus. You believe the Son. And everyone who believes in the Son does not perish. Now, apolimi here means to cause or experience destruction. This could be ruined. This could be destroy. In the middle, which is what we have here, it means to perish or be ruined. But it is used of eternal death elsewhere. And when you look at it in terms of the middle, it's used of individuals, but especially of eternal death. Okay? So, Apolimi here has this sense of eternal death. And guess what? John 3.16 finishes with the opposite, eternal life or life eternal. But might have life everlasting. We should probably translate this everlasting because there is a beginning, but no ending. Life everlasting. Then verse 17. For God did not send the Son into the world in order that, here's more purpose, he might judge the world Who's the one doing the judging? It's God. Although some commentators might say it's the Son, most say it's God. God is the main subject here, so I would argue it is God. God is the one who judges. But eventually, in New Testament, we also see that God hands over to Jesus the judgment. So you could also say it is the Son. God might not judge the world, or in order that he would judge the world. That's not why he sent the Son. 
No, he sent the son in order that the world might be saved through him. Sozo here. To preserve or rescue from natural dangers or afflictions. Save, keep from harm, preserve, rescue. Save from death. These are from natural dangers. But it's better to save or preserve from transcendent danger or destruction. Save, preserve from eternal death. Well, lo and behold, we were working with this idea of everlasting death here in Apolimi. Sozo is the opposite of that. To save from that death. To save from judgment. Well, lo and behold, we also have judgment here, right? So in Sozo, we have the opposite of a negative judgment, Krini, and Apolite. We have the opposite, all in Sozo. Except this is passive. In order that the world might be saved through him. Then we come to Dia. Dia plus the genitive. It's a marker of extension through an area or object. Now, that, that can't be right. It's not with a verb of going. Marker of extension in time. We're not dealing with time. Marker of instrumentality or circumstance. We're getting closer. You can see through here is the translation, but we're not dealing with the means or instrument. We're not dealing with manner. How? It's not a verb of saying, for example. It's not a tenance or prevailing circumstance. Marker of personal agency, through or by, with focus on agency, through, the agency of, by. This is what we're dealing with right here. Jesus, the Son, is the agent through whom God intends to save the world. And so we can translate it. For so God loved the world with the result that he gave his only son in order that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have life eternal for god did not send the son into the world in order to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him i hope you found this video helpful if you did hit the like button Otherwise, brush up on your Hebrew, brush up on your Greek, and we'll see you next time.